Hey man, what are you up to in here? I'm just working on the chlorination of propane. Radical. Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the free radical halogenation of propane. So, two things I want to say first. One, uh, we went over the mechanism when we were doing tutoring last week, so if you don't have that down, I would review it in the book and make sure you understand how that kind of reaction flows through to get the products. Second, as I'm going through concepts on here, I'm going to uh, put up some problems and it's going to be really helpful if you actually do the problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say pause and you're going to use that extra time you have to pause the video, do the problem that I put on the board, and then you can resume it and I'll walk through the problem and you can check your answer. It's going to be a lot more helpful if you actually pause the video and work through these problems and then see where you're at and make sure that you can do something like this. For example, if it ended up on exam. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at the halogenation of propane. In this case, we're looking at the free radical chlorination of propane. So, you know, we need to initiate it with light. That's going to generate our chlorine radical. And then it's going to substitute onto our propane. So one thing I want to draw attention to is that there's two different kinds of carbons that this chlorine can substitute on. Uh, it can either be one of these M1s, which you can see are the same type of carbon. There's no way to differentiate each end carbon, because if we just flip the molecule around, that carbon becomes that one, and that one becomes that one. So we call those chemically equivalent. And then we have this one here in the middle, and that one is, is chemically distinct from the two M1s. So we have names for them. If you notice, this one is attached to only one other carbon, same with this. So we call these primary. We denote them like that. And we might say that the hydrogens attached to them are primary as well. This carbon here, we say, since it's attached to two other carbons, we say is secondary. And we could say that these two hydrogens are secondary as well. So I want to go ahead and draw up the two products that can happen when you run this reaction. You're going to see that one of them is a substitution onto the end carbon. So we can say that's a primary product that's at one chloropropane. And then the other one is going to substitute onto the secondary carbon. So that would just be two chloropropane. And let me just get them up here real quick. So, I'm going to just add the chlorines in red so you can kind of see them easier. You can see this one, primary, added there, and this one is secondary. And when you actually do this reaction, these two are going to be your major products, and we're only going to pay attention to these products where it only substitutes once. And the relative amounts are going to be, you're going to get 40% of your uh, primary substitution and you're going to get 60 percent of the secondary and you know that in the mechanism the radical is going to abstract a hydrogen to make room for the chlorine to be added onto the carbon so we may say that the secondary hydrogens have some sort of reactivity compared to the primary hydrogens and that's going to lead to this disparity here so what someone might ask you is what are the relative reactivities of each of these hydrogens? And if you've never done a problem like this before, you might say, oh, well, I just want to compare 60 to 40. So I'll just say 60 divided by 40, and that's going to give me 1.5. So these are 1.5 times more reactive than these hydrogens. And if you did that, you would be wrong. That's because you don't take into the account the different amounts of each hydrogen that you have. So I'm going to show you how you do a problem like this. When you're looking at this 40% here, you need to remember that although this sort of substitution happens 40% of the time, there are six different hydrogens that it can happen to. We can't differentiate which hydrogen was abstracted to create this product but we can say that if it happens 40% of the time, if we divide that amongst the six different carbons, or the six, the, the six different hydrogens, we can say how reactive each individual hydrogen is. 
So if we do 40 divided by 6, and I don't have this completely memorized, so I have my calculator, we get 6.67. So I'm going to put that down here. In fact, I'm going to rewrite that big so you guys can see it. So we just did 40 divided by 6, and we got 6.67. So that means that each primary hydrogen is going to react 6.67% of the time. Now we're going to look over at the secondary hydrogens. So if you notice, there's only two of those. So if this sort of substitution happens 60% of the time, if we divide it amongst the two of them, we're going to see that this happens 30% of the time for each of these hydrogens. So when you're comparing relative reactivities, you're comparing how often the secondary individual hydrogens react to the primaries. So you're comparing these two numbers here. So if you wanted to say how much more reactive the secondary is, you could do 30 divided by 6.67 and uh, well, I'm write in percent. they're both in percent, it's a unit list, and we get 4.5. So we can say that the secondary hydrogens are 4.5 times as reactive as the primary hydrogens. So I'm going to go ahead and give a similar problem for you guys to sort of practice this concept. Uh, and this time, it's going to be a free radical halogenation, but I'm going to use butane, so you have to sort of think a little differently. So I'm going to draw out the butane up here for you, just so you can get a feel for what's going on. So adding all the hydrogens. And what this is going to react with I'm going to say we're reacting it with chemical X. And I'm also going to tell you that X represents a halogen. And I'm going to, you, I want you to treat this as if it's going through the same mechanism of free radical halogenation. But since this isn't a real thing, I can just make up whatever numbers I want, and I'm going to. So if you notice, there's still only, if you're counting monohalogenation, it happening once, there's two different chemically distinct carbons and hydrogens. There's your primary ones and your secondary ones. There's no way to distinguish these two, and there's no way to distinguish these two when it reacts. And your numbers I'm going to give you is, so you're going to get primary substitution 50% of the time, and you're going to get secondary substitution 50% of the time. So now I'm going to ask, what are the relative reactivities of the secondary hydrogens to the primary hydrogens? Pause. Oh, I forgot to jump. Alright, so let's do this problem. The first thing I want to do is count how many different um, primary hydrogens there are that we're working with. So if you just count one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six primary hydrogens. We're going to use this to find out the percentage that each individual hydrogen reacts. And then for the secondary, if you just count, there's one, two, three, four. So we do a similar calculation for our secondary hydrogens. So when you actually do this math out, you get 50 divided by six is going to equal 8.33. That is to say that each primary hydrogen is going to individually react 8.33% of the time, and then 50 divided by 4 is 12.5. So these are both percents. So if we want to find out relatively how much more reactive these are, we just divide the two numbers. So if you do 12.5 divided by 8.33, you're going to get 1.5. So that is to say that the secondary hydrogens are 1.5 times as reactive as the primary hydrogens. The, the idea that secondary hydrogens are more reactive is called selectivity. And as we move forward, we're going to find that the bromination compared to chlorination is more selective. You get a higher amount of secondary hydrogens reacting. And in my next video, we're going to talk about the Hammond postulate, and it's going to explain why each uh, different, I guess, uh, the chlorination and the bromination are selective and why the bromination is even more selective than the chlorination. So, check that out. Alright, see you guys.